You might have seen my videos on how I modded my M1 MacBook Air and gained almost a 20% increase in performance. In that video, I mentioned that I thought the modded M1 MacBook Air would be either equal or even more powerful than the MacBook Pro in certain situations. And in this video, I wanted to test it. By the way, I know there are a few videos floating around on this thermal mod. So just know that I've been testing this mod for almost two months already. So I have a pretty good understanding of it and I have the data to back it up. Getting straight to the point, which I know you guys love, here are the results. As you can see with the thermal mod applied, the base model M1 MacBook Air is literally just as powerful as the M1 MacBook Pro, but obviously for 300 US dollars less in price. There is a less than 1% difference in performance between the two. Now I did some other additional testing on Blender and Premiere Pro to confirm this result and they were all pretty much exactly the same. Cinebench and DaVinci Resolve renders seem to give me the most consistent test results though, which is why I'm only including them here. Now, if you're interested in seeing a thermal mod M1 MacBook Air plus a laptop cooling pad versus the M1 MacBook Pro, stay tuned for my next video because you are going to be very surprised. Let's jump straight into the testing for this video and I'll show you how I got these results. Okay guys, so starting off with the first test, which is on Cinebench, just doing these single core scores. This is the M1 MacBook Air on the left and also the M1 MacBook Pro on the right, both base model. This one obviously has the thermal mod applied. And as you can see here, we are getting bang on what we were getting before. So 15, 14 for the single core score. And then moving across to the M1 MacBook Pro, we are getting 1501. So there's a little bit of difference there which is totally fine and not exactly the same, but it's within the margin of error. Now, if you guys are wondering why I'm doing this test in the living room, it's just because this is the most temperature controlled and neutral temperature wise room in the house. So this is gonna give us a really good baseline. And this is actually where I did the original testing on the M1 MacBook Air. So it should give us some pretty cool results. Anyway, let's do the multi-core benchmark. We'll do some FLIR thermal testing as well, and we'll see how these two compare. Okay, so we've been doing the multi-core benchmark for about five minutes now, so it's about 50% done. And as you can see here, I've got the temperatures up of both devices. So the MacBook Air, we are sitting at around 89, 90 degrees uh, CPU temperature versus the MacBook Pro, which is around 84 degrees. Uh, and you can see there, these temperatures are actually pretty spot on. The MacBook Pro is obviously about four or five degrees hotter at the CPU, but uh, the average overall temperature of the computer itself, 69 degrees <laughs> on the MacBook Air with just 66 degrees on the MacBook Pro. So that's pretty much bang on and that's very, very similar. Now, one thing I will mention is the fans on the MacBook Pro have well and truly kicked in. Right now, they're only at about 5,700 RPM, but they are definitely audible, while the MacBook Air is obviously dead silent. So that's another thing to take into account when comparing these two. I'll put the microphone closer to the MacBook Pro at this point, just so you can see how loud it is. Okay guys, so the multi-core Cinebench test has finished and I have to say I am pretty shocked. So over here on the MacBook Air, you can see we got 7,700 for the multi-core and on the MacBook Pro, you can see we got 7,718 on the multi-core. So just an 18 point increase between the two, but a $300 price difference. So that is very, very impressive. I have to say, I am actually pretty surprised at that. I did not think the modded MacBook Air would be able to bridge the gap between the Pro. And obviously, as you guys heard just before, the Pro makes not a lot of noise, definitely quieter than the Intel versions, but obviously a hundred times more sound than the fanless MacBook Air. So let's close all of this down and let's move on to the final test, which is rendering. Okay, so you guys would have seen in my previous video where I did some 8K red raw footage renders on the modded M1 MacBook Air. And in this particular video, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So as you can see in this particular clip, they've been going for about 
20 minutes already and you can see this is the modded m1 air you can see it's about 40 to 44 degrees uh, in the middle of the chassis right there in that hot spot it's about 66 degrees celsius that's right above the m1 cpu you can see there towards the edge getting quite cool moving on to the macbook pro much much cooler so about 35 to 37 degrees celsius on the chassis right in the center there above the chip 41 degrees so almost a 25 degree difference down towards the bottom there a lot cooler as well this is both of them side by side so very interesting here you can see how much hotter and how much clustered and uh, closer together the heat is on the left Moving into the MacBook Pro, again, just a lot cooler than the modded M1 MacBook Air. But again, guys, like I mentioned in the previous video, you're not going to be having either of these devices on your lap while you're rendering or gaming. So it really doesn't matter. In terms of the actual side effects of the heat, there really aren't any major issues, but I'll leave that for another video. Okay, guys, so the render has completed. Now, if you do remember from the previous video, this is 8K red raw footage. So pretty much the most extreme type of footage you're ever going to be editing on these devices. By the way, there is my assistant. She's been testing this with me. Now, on the MacBook Air, we have a render time here of 26 minutes and 41 seconds. And then on the MacBook Pro... 26 minutes and 24 seconds. So you can see the MacBook Air only just narrowly lost to the MacBook Pro, even though it had the thermal mod. But guys, that's a difference of only of about 20 seconds, which is barely anything between these two devices. And as you can tell here, there's no airflow underneath the Mac Air, uh, whereas there obviously is with the Mac Pro because it has the fan. So that is an extremely impressive performance. One thing my assistant and I forgot to mention also is that both of these devices are on the same software version, same software of DaVinci Resolve. And we also ran these renders several times on each machine. And the results you're seeing here is pretty much what we get every time. Every single render is within about 20 to 30 seconds of each other. So they're both almost exactly the same speed over about half an hour's worth of rendering. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. Again, do stick around on the channel for the modded M1 MacBook Air with the laptop cooling fan versus the MacBook Pro video that's coming very, very soon. And that's going to be a really interesting one to watch. Thanks for watching this one and I will catch you in the next one.